This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. As the trucking industry waits to go all electric, natural gas seems to be making its strongest ever case for long haul. You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Colt. Recent legislation at the state and federal levels mandating zero tailpipe emissions has put electric drivetrains, and that includes hydrogen, into the spotlight. But trucking has long been down this path of reduced carbonization. The Diesel Technology Forum estimates that well over half the trucks on the road today are of the newest generation, 2011 and newer, and only about 20% of all trucks on the road today were built before 2007 and not equipped with a PM filter. Before battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell became the trendy zero emission play that it is right now, natural gas was the reduced emissions alternative. I've been in this industry a little over a decade and I've seen natural gas get a big head of steam a couple of times, but it never really seems to take root outside of a couple of niche applications like transit bus and refuse. CNG and LNG have faced a lot of the same infrastructure and onboard storage challenges and a lot of the fears of the unknown that electric and hydrogen are facing right now. But there was also this glaring lack of power, which Cummins is on the brink of solving with a 15-liter engine that's just getting into the hands of fleet partners. Sean Whitaker, who is Chevron Lubricant Senior Staff Engineer, he joins the 1044 this week. And he says that large bore engine could be just the thing that transportation needed to get on board with natural gas. So you mentioned that you've kind of seen this um come and go over the past 10 years when you've, you've kind of been involved in this space. And I've seen the same thing really over the last 30. And I think, you know, natural gas engines have been in the kind of transportation market since the early 90s, but generally for fairly niche applications, things that were kind of centrally fueled and for lower horsepower applications, things like waste haulers, city buses, uh, school buses, and really just for kind of customer bases that either needed to turn to it for kind of regulatory purposes or sometimes out of convenience because there, there was ready access to the fuel. The introduction of this 15 liter platform that has been announced for 2024, I think really signals to the industry that we have reached a tipping point and then it, it really is going to start to make sense for the long haul, haul fleet. And that's probably for a variety of reasons. What I've seen over the years, and you probably have too, is like technology and infrastructure really always are playing this chicken and egg game because um, there, there tends not to be an infrastructure if there's not sort of a, a anticipated demand. Um, and I think with, with the introduction of this product and the obvious interest from big fleets, right? We're, we just recently entered into a partnership where we're supplying natural gas and Cummins is supplying engines to, to Walmart. So they're really looking at it as a sustainable solution that, that they can use for long haul trucking. And, and I think many other fleets are, are doing the same. And I think with that, infrastructure build outs will, will come along. Newer natural gas kind of truck platforms are starting to integrate much larger tanks that are sort of enabling time between refueling upwards of kind of 1,200 miles or so. And then that's another thing that's really lending itself to long, longer haul applications and even anxiety about whether you're going to be able to find fuel that you, you've got a, a fairly long range um, and enabling that high uptime and ability to find fuel where you need it. Natural gas isn't a drop-in reduced emission solution like renewable diesel might be, for example. But Sean said integrating natural gas into a fleet and syncing its maintenance needs with those of a predominantly diesel fleet is a lot easier than it used to be. Sean tells us how after a word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. 
Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. So 25 or 30 years ago, when the kind of natural gas technology was in its relative infancy, there there was a, a fairly large disparity in terms of like the ease of maintenance associated with them compared to the more traditional diesel platforms. But um, with a number of advancements, both in terms of uh, hardware improvements, fluid quality, other things, there's actually been a much more kind of significant effort to bring sort of maintenance practices uh, that are that are in some cases even better than traditional diesel engines. You've got oil drain intervals that are now approaching like sixty thousand miles, or in in sort of hours in the thousand hour the space. Spark plug change intervals have gotten you know, significantly longer than some of those earlier platforms, and so so some of the things that sort of dogged the platforms in the early days have seen significant improvement and are starting to make it uh, look a lot more attractive to uh, more traditional fleets. One of the things that's helped simplify maintenance is that Delo 600 ADF was just recently certified by Cummins for its natural gas engines. So a few years ago, fleets had to buy two different engine oils across their diesel and natural gas trucks or use the same oil but give up some benefits from one engine to the next. That's no longer the case. So historically, there have um, sort of been distinct um, engine oil appetites between natural gas engines and diesel platforms. So natural gas engines tend to yield a, a little bit hotter combustion. So the, the fluids do get exposed to a much more elevated temperature. And we've, we've seen this more recently with diesels, but it's always been important for natural gas engines to be very robust to things like oxidation and nitration. Uh, they haven't tended to be as affected by um, soot loading because of the different combustion phenomenon. Um, and they've also kind of tended towards having lower ash levels. And it's not really because of DPFs, of course, but because of things like spark plug fouling and, and valve kind of fouling and torching that has driven us there. Um, and that that's kind of been one of the reasons why fleets have been reluctant because they, you know, they don't, they, they don't can't practically carry uh, multiple products to service a mixed fleet of, of natural gas and diesel engines because they've had very distinct um, appetites and, and needed to carry these different products. So with, with our recent introduction of Dello 600 ADF, it's an ultra low ash technology to begin with. We did that for very specific reasons for diesel engine platforms uh, to prolong DPF maintenance intervals and provide other ancillary advantages. What we what we quickly learned is a lot of those kind of performance attributes that we built into that fluid lended itself very well to natural gas applications. So we started putting our product to the test and these Cummins applications pursuant of an approval against the, the 20,092 standard and are one of the few products now in the market that offer that uh, ability to meet the API CK4 the whole host of diesel OEM specs, as well as this mobile natural gas engines specification. So it's really a kind of one product without compromise that uh, fleets can turn to to put into those mixed fleets and, and get all the advantages on their diesel engines, but then be able to, to put it into the natural gas engines. Well, so it's a, a real game changer in that regard. I think there have been products uh, introduced in the past that, that kind of offer that solution, but really it's it's not with the same advantages offered to the diesel engine. And that's really what we're seeing with, with our product. You can really get those ro robust um, sort of maintenance related benefits on the diesel side and then, you know, no compromise to the natural gas engine and really provide that robust um, oxidation performance, uh, deposit control, everything that's uh, demanded of natural gas uh, products these days. So how is natural gas a cleaner diesel alternative? Sean goes through the science for us. When you compare sort of a natural gas engine and fuel to diesel engine and fuel, there's a lot of pretty significant differences. So even just if you look at the, the chemistry of the fuels themselves, natural gas essentially is methane. So it's a carbon 
atom surrounded by four hydrogens. So it's got a very different hydrogen to carbon ratio than diesel fuel, which is a much longer chain length, maybe comes along with some other sort of impurities. The way that natural gas is utilized on a heavy-duty engine is actually through uh, much more similar to the way a a gasoline engine operates. So in this case, uh, many of them today operate stoichiometrically and then with spark emissions, right, instead of the compression emission that you get in a diesel engine. That sort of combination yields a, a couple different things. You have much less of the carbonaceous uh, particulate matter that is traditionally emitted from the end from a diesel engine, much less of that in in the tailpipe of a natural gas engine and much less of it that ends up in the crankcase. And because the natural gas engine operates stoichiometrically, you can run it with more traditional after treatment systems. So these stoichiometric um, natural gas spark ignited engines are running with three-way catalysts like your your gasoline passenger car. These are passive systems, they're flow through, uh, don't require things like diesel exhaust fluid, uh, DPF maintenance, all of that sort of that's associated with modern diesel is really um, not in the picture for natural gas. Reduced emissions is a step in the right direction for air quality, but recent regulations don't give fleet operators a lot of flexibility. These are zero emission regulations, not almost zero. But Sean says regulations aren't the only reason that fleets are embracing natural gas and complying with mandates isn't the only benefit. There are a a number of end users and, and fleets that are really looking holistically at sustainability as a measure across their their fleet, their business and operation. Natural gas powered vehicles uh, provide some advantages in many of those regards. So we talked earlier about the ability for them to get uh, to very low uh, in, uh, tailpipe out emissions. So the ultra low NOx standards are achievable because you've got those very efficient, robust three-way catalysts that are drastically reducing the nitrogen oxide emissions. You have little to no particulate matter emissions. And then when you start to think about things like carbon dioxide, really, and looking at the carbon intensity of the application, you can derive significant advantages when you couple the engine with a renewable natural gas. And so that's something that uh, Chevron has got more uh, serious about in commercial realm these days, offering what we call renewable natural gas that's integrated into the, the pipelines that allow a much more significant, uh, significantly lower carbon intensity because we're deriving the uh, natural gas from renewable sources as opposed to petroleum. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.